My name is Dave Hollenbach, the host of From Embers to Excellence. My goal is to explore the many facets of leadership from the perspectives of some amazing people. In addition to leadership, I like to discuss mental health, PTSD, and overcoming adversity. If you have a favorite episode, I would love to hear about it. Message me through social media or my website, and I will share some free tools to help you achieve your goals. Please like, subscribe, and leave a review. If you haven't purchased your copy of my book, Fireproof, please grab a copy today. Thanks for listening. Today, I'm speaking with Terry Brock. Terry is a Speaker Hall of Fame recipient and brings a passion for technology, a sense of history, and real-world business strategies uh, for success to events all over the world. He earned an MBA in marketing and is focused on real-world business applications. He leverages his background in journalism and education in live presentations all over the world, like I said, including the United States, Mexico, England, Australia, Russia, Ireland, China, Japan, Thailand, Argentina, Indonesia, Nigeria, Singapore, Bermuda, Malaysia, United Arab Emirates, and, and, and even Texas. Um, as a virtual presentation expert, Terry is able to break the bonds of distance and time to serve clients in a way that makes them feel as though they are in the room with them. Terry is more than a technology trends expert. He's a speaker, virtual presenter, interviewer, published author, and coach who packs everything he touches with solid business strategies meant to build relationships and improve the bottom line. And, uh, you know, Terry's got uh, an excellent podcast. He has some amazing guests, and uh, I, we may touch on it uh, today, but um, your your passion for, uh, you know, crypto and um, I, I don't know all the terminology, but, uh, you know, if, you, if the conversation leads us there, maybe we can touch on some of that, but uh, Terry, thank you so much for agreeing to have this conversation with me. I really appreciate it. It's great to be with you, Dave. Really looking forward to this. Right. Well, uh, I always like to start off with where it all began. Um, where were you born and raised and, and what was life like for you in, in the early days? Well, I was born at a very young age. And so <laughs> I got started uh, there in uh, Michigan where I was born. Uh, Mom and dad were there. They were originally from Arkansas, but moved up to Michigan because at that time, that's where the jobs were. And so they went there looking for work and they worked very hard. They were uh, people that didn't have a whole lot of education, but they worked hard and did what they could to raise their family. I grew up there and then went to uh, undergrad school, uh, started actually when I was a junior in high school, attending a community college and took some courses there. And then I graduated early from high school in February and went up to uh, Lansing, Michigan, and started to go into college there, came back in June, and uh, went through the graduation ceremonies and all that, and then just continued working uh, all the way through. Undergrad was out in Oklahoma at ORU in Tulsa, and my MBA is from Georgia State. So for me, education has always been important, and now I find it's very important for all of us to continue education, not necessarily in taking classes, although there is a place for that, but now, fortunately, Dave, as you know, we're in a wonderful time because we can learn continually going to the University of YouTube, taking courses that are out there all around and learning all kinds of new useful skills. The marketplace says, hey, that's good. And, you know, in our world today, things are changing so fast. It's amazing. I just finished uh, doing a recording. I was telling you uh, uh, this morning for looking at a new feature that Google has called BARD that is gonna be competing with chat GPT, which is also a new thing out there, taking search engines to a whole new level and taking the ability for machines to create interactive language discussions with us. And both of these companies are competing now, Google competing with Microsoft. And so today we're getting a chance to do it. So I'm talking about that. What I did, I actually went out and I asked chat GPT, which is the dominant one has been around for, a long time for a few weeks now. That's a long time in this market <laughs> since November 30th of last year. And it's there and asked it what it thought of Google's Bard. 
So now I'm getting the two engines fighting each other and looking at that and had a chance to put the video together on that. So by the time people listen to this, you might see that and you can bounce over to uh, Stark Raving Entrepreneurs there on uh, YouTube and get a chance to listen to it. But I'd say today is a wonderful time to be alive because we're seeing so many opportunities in the midst of all the yuck that's going on out there. We still see there's a lot of opportunities. Sir. Yeah. I, and, and Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, that's your show. <laughs> And it's also a program that you've developed. Yes, exactly. We came up with that. Actually, we got it because uh, Gene and I were in a, uh, speaking for a conference up in, I think it was Philadelphia, several years ago. And uh, we were in the room there, and I was uh, talking on the phone to someone. And I told him, well, I'm just a star craving entrepreneur, just came up with it and talked to him. I thought, OK, it's uh, it, kind of who I am. I like being an entrepreneur, getting out there and going for it. Well, she in her wisdom said, hmm, that's a pretty good name. She bounced over and reserved the name for us this a few years ago. So we've had that dot com for a while and now we're doing something with it. But I think our world is ready for that so that an entrepreneur is someone who says, hey, I want the freedom and I want to get out and serve people in a creative way that I can make the world better. And I think that's what life is about. You should be able to do the things you want. We strongly underpin what we're doing with a philosophy called live and let live. We believe in that very strongly. It's kind of coupled with another philosophy of the NAP, non-aggression principle, that you go out and you do anything you want to do, whatever you want to do. I realize that can be kind of scary, but I think well, here's the two conditions. Number one, you take responsibility for what you're doing. And number two, you don't harm others. Don't hurt other people. Don't take their stuff. Don't commit fraud. Don't hurt them in ways like that. But you live, do whatever you want. And so we take the stark raving entrepreneurs with the idea that you can create abundance in the world. You can create just the life that you want doing whatever it might be, as long as you're embracing the non-aggression principle. You don't aggress and initiate force against others. So it's a kind of a fun thing to do and uh, great to be alive today so that we can do that. I had the privilege of meeting you at your your holiday event back in December. Um, just an incredible event, some really amazing people and got to spend some time talking with you and, and your people. lovely bride-to-be and um, just, just a, a great time. And it really sparked this curiosity in me where, you know, someone like you, what, what events shaped you? I mean, you're like, and I'm not trying to blow smoke. Like you're an incredible human being. You've accomplished so much. And thank you. Before I ever met you, I, I knew of you. Uh, just the people within the National Speakers Association that, you know, when they find out that I'm in Central Florida, they're like, oh, do you know Terry Brock? And really? Like, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's it's really cool that I, I I got to go to your house, you know? Like, oh, yeah. We were delighted to have you uh, over. <laughs> it was great. We so, like doing that every so often with our well, yearly. We not we do it now. Now the pandemic's over. Now we like to have the chapter come over our local NSA chapter, and uh, just have a nice holiday party. We get a chance to talk with each other, learn some things too. You know, we're speakers. We got of course have some kind of training and learning. We like that because it's fun to us, and we get a chance to know each other. And then I even worked out. Did you notice that evening? I worked out an arrangement with Universal that they would have fireworks for us. Yeah, yeah so no, that, that was spectacular. Nice. Yeah, of course, they do it every <laughs> night of the year, but that's a whole other thing. Back in the <laughs> Say we do it that way. Well, uh, what what events in your life led you to become the speaker that you are? Well, I guess it's a series, like with so many people, it's a series of events that happen. And I uh, started doing uh, speaking at an early age uh, when I was in school from uh, in uh, third grade, actually. Started doing some public speaking and then did a little bit more in uh, later years, and then junior high and high school. And then in undergrad school, went on for learning uh, radio and TV and newspaper. I actually worked in radio when I was uh, in high school. I worked for a radio station and I also worked for a newspaper. So that was a lot of fun putting those two together. When I was, when I was 16, I was working for a local paper there in the Jackson, Michigan area, and I saw the uh, there was a senator, a state senator from Lansing, who they asked me to interview, and so I did. Had an enjoyable time with that. They liked what I did, and then a few months later, they sent me to Washington D.C. and I covered Richard Nixon's inauguration. 
which was really something for a 16 year old kid to do that and go, wow, this is really amazing. It was quite different too. I saw a lot of things happening that uh, you don't normally see there in the country, in Michigan. And it was uh, quite different. But I did that undergrad school and then went on for an MBA because I realized I need to learn some of this thing called business. Somebody was talking about a P&L statement. And I said, what, what's a P&L statement? I mean, we didn't study a whole lot, a lot of that in undergrad with radio, TV, and newspaper. So I went on for that. And then I found it's really good. And I find right now I'm more of a student of life. I love learning. I find there's so much more I need to learn. I feel like I'm in second week of kindergarten heading for a PhD. So I've got a long way to go and I want to keep learning. But I think that I've been very uh, honored and uh, benefited from so many good people that I've been able to hang around. The National Speakers Association, NSA, has given me the opportunity to meet a lot of wonderful people like you, Dave, and get a chance to see some people who are really incredible in their field. And not only are they incredible, they achieved a lot, but also we have a culture of the spirit of Cabot. Cavett Robert, who's a founder of uh, NSA, a co-founder of our organization, and he always talked about making the pie bigger, helping others. And so it's kind of in our DNA within NSA to reach out and help others. And those have been uh, that has been a philosophy that has really helped me. I've had it before, went to NSA, but it really went up several notches because of the good people that are there. And uh, I think it's a marvelous thing. I wish we had more of that in our world today, trying to figure out how to help others, how to serve others in a real good entrepreneurial way, live and let live, and be able to live peacefully doing what we want in life. Throughout your career, your speaking career, that you've you've traveled the world speaking on different subjects 44 countries and counting so far <laughs> and what is what is the underlying theme that you bring to these different organizations what is it that you do and say to help these organizations become or you know help them achieve their goals I talk a lot about technology, but how technology can change our lives for the better. Of course, talking about business and technology, you could say, here's a technology that's out there. The geek in me likes to look at all that. Oh, yeah. Hey, cool. New technology and get that. But what we've got to look at is how does that help people make their lives better? And I find that the most important thing is that we can reach out and help others. As I travel to different countries, and I'm really honored and just so grateful to be able to have traveled to so far 44 countries, but I find something really interesting, Dave. Wherever you go, you've got people who really want to take care of their families. They want to do better this year than they did last year. They want life to be better for their children later. They want to be in peace. And I think that's what most people want, at least in my non-scientific random sampling that I've done and the reading that I've done and seen. And I think the problems come when we get rulers who want to exercise their power over others. And they say throughout history, hey, you go over and kill those guys over there because they're bad. And they go, really? Why should I? I mean, why would I take up a gun and go shoot at somebody who hasn't bothered me? And uh, they get all kinds of different ideas. I think, wait a minute, how about if we tried to be more peaceful warriors, being warriors who are peaceful? Now, there's a place for defense. I get it. And we have a right to defend ourselves. Absolutely. But I also think uh, as we travel around the world, it's a good idea to learn from other cultures. Growing up where I did in uh, Lower Mid Michigan and the way that I was raised, I had a certain framework of ideas and, ide and cognition of how the world functions and works. When I'd go over to the Middle East and be there with my friends that I made, listening to their culture and how they reacted, and then hearing the prayers that they would have on a Friday, like in Dubai, and you hear the prayers, no, that's something we didn't hear a lot in uh, rural Michigan. No, didn't grow up with that. And I go over to Japan, and I'd see people, and I'd they'd give me a coin, and i ring the Shinto bell, or i go down to Hong Kong, and they would uh, have these certain uh, symbols, or they'd have things around them to have good luck. And I mean, luck is a real big thing over there. And they want that. And I go over to Europe and I see how people react there. I find we're all um, in different circumstances. We have different concepts. But what matters is we're still human beings. And as I go from different country to different countries, uh, find, you really find out what people think when you get a chance to sit down with some drinks at a local bar or pub and talk with them. And just find out where they're coming from. And I'll sit down, say in Moscow, have some good vodka. And they have some Ocho Korosho, very good vodka over there. Or over in Japan, you know, with some really good sake. 
and talk with them and just say, hey, what does this sound like to you? You do anything you want to do in life. Here's the philosophy. Do anything as long as you don't harm other people, you don't hurt them, you don't take their stuff. How does that sound to you? And again, in my non-scientific random sampling, people I've seen go, yeah, sounds like a pretty good idea. I think, well, that's a good way to live. The idea of treating people with peace, trying to find the best in people. And you don't get walked on, no, but you stand up for being someone who's going to make a big difference in a positive way in this world. I think that's a, a good way to live. And for me, it seems like a good philosophy moving forward. What do you think? I, I agree. And I, I, I would like to add something to that and see what what your thoughts are on this. I, I've had this conversation before. I, I wrote about it in my book. Um, you know, when I left the fire service, I, I struggled with, you know, this loss of identity. You know, I'd spent 23 years in the fire service and I leave that. And all of a sudden I'm not the person that I had identified. You know, I had identified as a firefighter, a fire officer, yeah. a, a chief officer, a and, noble profession, very noble. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Well, so not having that identity, it, it was a struggle until I realized that that was just my occupation. That was a role that I played in the world. It really was not my identity. And, and I had heard, you know, monks, people... <laughs> talk about you know that that age-old question who am i and mm -hmm. asking yourself that over and over again and then the oracle at delphi you know on the number one pillar uh in the temple you know, know thyself you know mm -hmm. this age-old question really being self-aware and knowing what it is that drives us and everybody wants to be happy they want to feel mm -hmm. fulfilled and what I found is that throughout mankind's written history, the, the great thinkers uh, throughout history have all said something very similar, that we are here to add value to those around us, to, to our loved ones, to our communities, to the world. That is, you know, what I think we are hardwired to do and that is where we will experience the most fulfillment and so mm -hmm. it's it's just another do no harm but in your actions while you're adding value to yourself so that you're better able to add value to the world around you and I, and i think that you embody that um you're constantly learning but you're not like hoarding the knowledge to yourself you're sharing it with the world and and I think that when when we work really hard at learning those things that come easy to us, you know, there's there's people that learn very easily, and there's others that need somebody to guide them through, uh, and um, and I I feel as though I have a gift in being able to do that, and you clearly have a gift. And um, and I and I feel like you've made that your mission in life, but there is uh, an innate reward in doing that. The there is that sense of fulfillment when you can see the value that you've added to those around you. Would mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah, I think that's important. It goes beyond just the paycheck. Paycheck is good. We like that. Hey, I'm a stark raving entrepreneur capitalist and believe in free market. And I think that's a great thing. Um, but I find also it's really good. And it just makes you feel so worthwhile when people will say, yeah, that helped me. This helped me to accomplish that. One of the things that Jen and I love doing is helping people to make money they make money and are able to do for themselves, for their families, and able to achieve that. And the way they do it is by helping others. That's the irony. You and I, we breathe only for ourselves. We sleep only for ourselves. Our thoughts are largely intrapersonal communication, the thoughts inside our head. So we're doing when we eat, we're only eating for ourselves unless someone's pregnant. And then that's a different story, of course. But that's the way our bodies and our lives are. But the irony of it is we do well and we have to do well by helping others. 
And I think that's the beauty of it is when you can focus on what can I do to solve the problem of others, the better off we'll be. My buddy uh, Zig Ziglar said it really well. He said long ago, you can get anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And so as you're helping them solving their problems, you do well. I think that's the beauty of the free market system, that the way you get ahead is by helping others. You do that helping others. If you try to hurt others, eventually that'll come back because people look, hey, don't be with him. He did this to me. Oh, he did. Well, I'm not going to work with him. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. But if they go, hey, I worked with this guy and good things happened to me. I did this or we made this money or we had this good thing happen. Really? Really? I might have to do some business with this person over here. And I think that's how we've got to look at what we can do to help the other person. And the more that we can get out of our own head and all that intrapersonal communication going on there and think about helping others and serving them, solving their problems, the better off we'll be. I, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more in, in greater detail about what you do with Stark Raving Entrepreneur? With Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, what we do is we work with people who are entrepreneurs or they want to become entrepreneurs on how to build their business, how to craft and mold it. And largely we're working with a lot of content creators, people who are speaking, they use the spoken and or written word and or video in some way to get their message out to the world. And so we give them specifics on here's the, for instance, here's the kind of microphone you should use, well, how to use a camera more properly, how to put all those things, how to create your script, how to put that together, how to uh, talk so that it comes across and people like what you're doing. And those types of, of uh, elements we blend into all of it so that people can come there and learn. And then we'll talk about other features that are happening, how that uh, you uh, can be aware of some new update that came with Zoom or that came on LinkedIn recently that can help you to get ahead. And we find that people love doing that. As a matter of fact, we have it every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time and 4 p.m. people come in, no charge. They come in, get it, join us from around the world, different places. It's kind of fun to do that. The people in uh, Europe are there and it's kind of late night for them. They're getting ready, staying up and saying, okay, time to go to bed. People in Australia are just getting up and joining us and uh, bouncing in there. So I think it's wonderful that we have a tool called Zoom that gives us the ability to, for people to get together. We show them how to do that. And then we have our paid programs as well, where we give hands-on, here's how you do it instructions to folks. We have a silver program where we uh, work with a do with you kind of model. So we show someone, here's how you do it. Now you try it on your own. We'll be there to help you. We're going to teach you how to do it. Now let's go over it again. Okay. That was good. Tweak it this way a little bit. Try it this way. Keep doing it again. We're doing it with them so that they're learning how to do it and actually implementing something like, for instance, creating a video how you can create that video, how you can write that, how to put your business plan together, how to refine it and tweak it, how to make a video. And then we come back with some feedback. Ooh, that part was good. Yeah, but that part right there, maybe you wouldn't have to do that. Do something a little different. Here's a way you can make that video even better and tweak it. So those are the kind of things I really enjoy doing and working with some people on that. We have another program where we work directly one-on-one with people giving them some no holds barred, uh, roll up your sleeves, get the job done kind of thing, get in there and really work after it. And that's what we're doing with it. We provide a lot of materials. They have a a large uh, body of work that we've already done, interviews with some incredibly brilliant, wonderful people. And we can uh, let them go back when they say, I've got a question about this topic. You say, oh, we covered that last year with so-and-so. She was excellent on this. She's an expert in the area. We watch this video. And as a member of the team, you're able to access the, that kind of resource that you're not going to get anywhere else. This is something that we customize and craft it just to what we're doing and how people can use that in a really profound way. I've heard nothing but great things about that program. I have to find some time on a Wednesday uh, to, to log in there because uh, your fiance, uh, she actually did a session for my speakers academy speakers lab and uh mm-hmm. what a great what a great course she provided some incredible information and ever since that night been like man i got it you know four o'clock is a little early for me to be able to 
get on there, but I, I need to lock in some time to be able to do that because I love to learn as much as I can. And this is an aspect that is pretty much self-taught. Everything that I'm doing with this podcast has been self-taught. And it's great to learn from people that are experts and know what they're talking about and like could possibly tell me, yeah, you're good at this, but here's something that you could shore up. And you don't know until you, until well, you don't know what you don't know until somebody tells you. Yeah, exactly. But I think what you're hitting on there, Dave, is really wise that we all realize we need help. We need someone to help us on whatever area it might be. A buddy of mine uh, named Harvey McKay has, uh, is on the Speaker Hall of Fame with us. He's uh, had several New York Times bestselling books, but he talks about the importance of having different coaches. And he was telling me, I remember a while back in a conversation we had, how he has a coach for his speaking. He wants to get better, even though he's in the Speaker Hall of Fame, still wants to get better. I want to get better, always. I always want to get better than I am. And he's doing that. He also has uh, clubs that he gets involved with for the uh, social connections and the community he's in there and where he lives. And he wants to learn this skill or that skill or how to golf better. So he hires a coach for that. And I find that that's a thing that smart people do when they need help in something. They'll do a lot on their own. We can read a lot. We can watch videos. We can take courses. But what you also want to consider is getting a mentor, a coach someone who can help you walk you through that. And when you think about it, when you're going to school, if you were enroll in a, say a community college or a local university and you take a class where you're either physically going there or you're doing it via video, you're tapping into the expertise of someone who's really, really smart, who knows something extra about that particular area. And I think that's a way, real good way to learn and to grow and to be able to make sure you have people like that helping you. One thing I wanted to touch on before we go, uh, we were talking about it before, we began recording uh the the episode right before this one is, is with dr josh who yeah josh hillman wonderful guy good buddy yeah. well you and your fiance are very passionate about health and i i'm curious to get your philosophy and and really maybe what it is that you are trying to do in that realm to, to help others? Well, I learned long, long ago when I was a little kid, it hit me real strong. I was really fortunate to have some key people tell me the importance of health. I remember my grandmother when she would say, if you have your health, you got everything. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And I thought, okay, that seems pretty good. And if grandma said it, then it's right. And uh, I just realized, okay, we got to take care of ourselves. Well, how do we do that? We watch what we put into our body. We're careful in the foods we eat, what we're consuming, what we're drinking, any substances we're taking. All of that needs to be very careful. Exercise is a real huge part of it as well, making sure we take care of our bodies in the right way. And so what we like to do, Gene and I both are passionate about that. We want to help people in many different ways. Two key areas, one would be weight loss so they can get in shape they need to be. And number two, longevity. And being able to do it, well, our friend Josh Hellman is a medical doctor. He's got two master's degrees in chemistry. You now that went to Cambridge, went to Harvard for his master's there, then went on to Harvard and MIT for med school. It's a specialized program. Only 40 people a year get into that. And he was in there with that program for him. So he knows what he's talking about. And we now have this program that it's a weight loss course with Josh. And since Gene and I did not study a whole lot of medicine when we went to business school, you know, they just missed that part in business school for some reason. But Josh went to medical school, Harvard and IT. He knows what he's talking about, and he's still current in it. I mean, he's still current in what's going on, studying current literature. So we're doing a program. Matter of fact, we're wrapping up our fourth session tonight on that, where people have come in. They, they pay to be in the course. They're involved with that, and they learn specifically what to do. And it's so, Dave, it's so encouraging to me. Just last week, we were asking people, okay, how you doing now? People are saying, well, I've lost 20 pounds. I've lost this, and I'm, I've done this, and I'm feeling better on this, and I'm consulting on these areas, going to work with my doctor on this area. And they're getting the information from Josh. And we're planning on doing some courses like this every so often something where we can work with Josh. We both understand how to get on the video and do that, how to do business, 
and we can handle some of the uh, areas of being good on video, on camera, interviewing people, things like that. And Josh does a marvelous job with his content. And so it's uh, helping the people that are there. And again, this is really meaningful to me because people that are there that are saying, hey, I have this problem. I have this problem. What can we do? And Josh would say, okay, what about this and that? He'd ask some questions and then he could give some suggestions. Of course, he's not right there with them as a physical doctor uh, would be. And he encourages them to be involved with their own doctor, make sure that's working. But also Josh treats patients as well. So people would come over, make an appointment and, and come to see him in his office and work with him there. But I think that it's really wonderful to be able to do that. And I'm just so grateful that we have the technology so we can do all of this today. We couldn't do all of these things we're doing now just a few years ago. But the technology has helped us. And sometimes people will decry Zoom and say, oh, no, another Zoom meeting. I think it's wonderful that we can see people and Dave, you and I are looking at each other right now. It's almost as if we got together at a local restaurant and we're sitting across the table from each other, except we didn't have to fight through all the traffic. We didn't have to take the time to do that, but we could just be there. And it's nice that we can learn by bringing in experts like Josh Hellman in from around the world and learn from those great experts who are out there. Now, before we go, is is there... Anything that we didn't touch on that you feel is important? I, I've got a couple brief questions, but I wanted to make sure that I, I provided time. If there was anything uh, that we didn't touch on that you feel is important to leave with the listeners. Oh, well, you're very kind to ask that. I appreciate that. And yes, there's all kinds because I'm a speaker. We can keep talking all the time. So we'll keep <laughs> going. So what I can say is I will be, refer people to our YouTube channel, Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. They're on YouTube and you can learn a lot of different areas, particularly around uh, connections on marketing, on technology. We're doing a lot now with AI, the artificial intelligence and what's happening with that, Web3 and uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and others to show people how they can really make their lives better with all of this. So we'd love to have you that are watching this stay in touch with us. Go over there. As a matter of fact, I'll even pay for your subscription to our channel on YouTube. How's that? that good well of course it's free anyway but, it, but just okay work with me on this but go ahead get over there and i think you'll find there's a lot of information you can use particularly if you are an entrepreneur and you're interested in technology you're interested in the philosophy of live and let live treating people properly never initiating force or coercion and embracing that non-aggression principle that's really what we're all about and where we can help others we'd love to help you awesome well one one Last question here. Uh, for those listening, there, there's veterans, first responders, authors, other podcasters, other speakers that, that listen to this show. Any advice that, you know, from a guru's perspective, you know, what, uh, what advice would you give to someone starting out uh, new to the speaking game, new to podcasting, that sort of thing? Uh, any advice? Yeah, I got a lot of advice. And that's one of the things we talk about. But let me give it to you in a nutshell, some things are important. Find out what it is that you can do that can help others in a meaningful, positive way that they benefit from, and they're ready, willing and able to pay you for. That's in a marketplace, so you can get the money that you need. We need to do that. Focus on that. You might be an expert on tsetse flies from Ethiopia in the 15th century. Well, that's real That's real good, Sparky, but if you are, it doesn't matter because there's not a big market demand for that. You want to get those skills where people say, hey, you can do that? How much would you charge us? Well, that's a reasonable price. Okay, you'll charge us for that, and we'll get this done. Wonderful. Focus on how you can solve their problems. And the way you'll want to do that is you want to make sure you're constantly studying and learning, constantly going back and learning useful, market valuable information. To do that, you want to make sure you keep your body in good shape. Watch what you're eating, drinking. Medical professionals are really good for this, and we highly recommend seeing them. So you've got your body taken care of. You get the right amount of sleep, stretching your mind and growing, and being involved in the community. 
a community where you can learn, where you have people that are going to be there to give you the information that you need. Our Stark Raving Entrepreneurs does that. And if it's the right fit for you, hey, we'd love to have you come and take a look. Again, it's at four o'clock every uh, Wednesday, four o'clock Eastern time that is. And we cover that. You can register for the event at StarkRavingEvent.com starkravingevent.com. You can register for it, no charge, come on in. And if that works for you, be great. But I think you can get out there and now we've got the opportunities as never before to do some amazing work to help others. And by helping others, you'll help yourself. This is the key. And if we can help out, we'd be glad to help in there, help out so that you achieve the goals that you want. Terry, thank you so much for, for spending this time with me and sharing so much. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, and I look forward to spending some time with you in July, if not sooner. Yes, indeed. Well, Dave, we really appreciate you and thank you for making this available to people so they can get their lives better. It's really what you've done. Look at your life. You and the fire service that you've done, you help people literally being able to save lives, help others in many different ways. And now you're doing it in a different way. And so as you move from being a fireman, a firefighter, that's one role you have. Now you get to be a communicator who solves problems and helps other people. So you're just shifting and morphing. And I want you to know, we greatly appreciate what you're doing, what you have done, what you're doing right now as well. Thank you for listening to this episode of From Embers to Excellence. Please visit hollenbachleadership.com for additional content. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review.